Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is taking a look at both GNOME Connections and GNOME Boxes. Uh, specifically here, GNOME Connections is a new application coming into GNOME 41. This is kind of a continuation of my last video where I dived into Fedora 35 and GNOME 41. I briefly skimmed over these applications, but these are two of my favorite GNOME-based applications. Maybe other than like disks. Right here, this is GNOME Connections. Now this is a new application and the UI and all that is completely built off of GNOME Boxes, which we're gonna be getting into in just a minute. That's more virtualization, while this is some remote connection software. And just to demonstrate this, what I went ahead and did is fired up a Windows Virtual Machine on my main computer. And what we're gonna do is simply connect over to it. And I just wanna show you how simple and easy this application is to use. Uh, before we actually create a new connection, I'm just going to go over here to this little hamburger menu. You have help and about connections. So if you go over to help, the GNOME help utility, and at the moment there's really only one thing here to connect to another computer. If I go ahead and click on that, you can see all the information that you're going to need. And it does support RDP if you're connecting to like a Windows machine or VNC if you're connecting to a uh, Linux machine. So I'm going to go to close that out. Let's go about connections real quick. You can see it is at version 41, a remote desktop client for the GNOME desktop environment. And then you have your credits here. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out and let's just go ahead and do a simple connection here. So we're gonna do RDP because I'm gonna be connecting to this uh, other Windows virtual machine I have here. And let's type in our IP address uh, on 68.0.67. And it's really as easy as that. There's other work that I had to do in this Windows machine. I had to open some firewall. Uh, give it some firewall access, enable remote connections. Uh, I had to change the VirtualBox network adapter to a bridge adapter, so it's actually recognizable on my local, uh, local network. So let's just connect to that. And then the username and password is just the same info for the actual Windows machine. Hit sign in, and it's going to connect us to that virtual machine. Now this isn't a virtual machine on this PC, it's a remote connected to another machine. You can use this for computers, servers, just about anything. And being that this is a remote connection, it's not going to change any of the resolution or anything like that as I go ahead and manipulate it. But you can see it's fairly responsive when I open things up. When I uh, move over the icons, the animations are pretty immediate. Granted this is on my local network, so that's uh, probably why. And then like, for example, one of the reasons why I actually have this Windows machine is for this application right here. I can just go ahead and fire up ArcGIS Pro, which is a uh, Windows only application that I have to use for school. And one thing that I've actually been doing is because I have a MacBook at the moment, so I've been connecting to this through the uh, Google Remote Desktop, and that's been working pretty well. But this is a wonderful application. I'm really excited for uh, Linux support on those M1 MacBooks because I would love to be in a GNOME environment on that machine. So this is that's basically the rundown of desktop connections on GNOME. It's really not that complicated of an application. It does one thing and it does it very well. If I go over here to keyboard shortcuts, it gives us those. If I hit this little thing right here, you could take screenshots, go full screen head over to properties and that's just gonna allow you to name it and actually see that IP address. And then if I hit this little power button, it's gonna close my connection. And when I'm in here, you can see I can have multiple connections. I could delete or go to properties. And it's really as simple as that. Wonderful little utility that they're including by default in GNOME. With my testing, it works perfectly fine. And that's really all we want out of our uh, simple Linux utilities. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump onto my main desktop and check out GNOME boxes. All right, and this is my uh, main computer now. If you couldn't tell, I could not help myself, and I went ahead and just installed a Fedora 35 on it. And uh, one thing before GNOME Boxes, a little off topic, uh, a feature that I haven't noticed before in GNOME is right here. It says your screen is being shared, and it gives a little icon here. If I click on that, I could turn it off, and that would probably ruin OBS. But that wasn't there before, so that is something that is cool, worth noting. With that said, let's go ahead and jump on into GNOME Boxes, one of my favorite pieces of virtualization software. So when you first open it up, you have this Welcome to Boxes tutorial here. I'm going to move this to the side. Uh, it's not letting me uh, resize it too much right now. But Welcome to Boxes, if we hit Next, it has uh, Express Installation Options. We're going to run over that. 
easy downloads, we'll check that out as well. And then it tells us about the drag and drop functionality. Something that is really cool when it comes to GNOME boxes versus other systems is, well, primarily VirtualBox. Uh, GNOME boxes seems to integrate the actual like resolutions and things that you would need to get with the VirtualBox uh, third-party drivers, the guest edition drivers. Uh, it all seems to be fairly automatic. So um, with VirtualBox, a lot of the times you have to install those drivers to get that drag and drop and the resolution changes. And even in Windows on GNOME boxes, I have not had to do anything like that. Everything, including window resizing and all that, just works. Now with that said, let's go ahead and create a virtual machine here. So if I go hit this little plus button, you can see I have create virtual machine. Now here are the feature downloads. This is what it was talking about by express downloads. Now this is a Fedora project. So you see Fedora 34, Fedora Silver Blue, as well as the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Those are the feature downloads. But if we look down here, you can see I have other operating system downloads and operating system image file. If I select the image file, I can pull an ISO image from my computer, or I can go operating system downloads and pick one of their distributions here. You saw I clicked on those uh, three dots and it's gonna give me a lot more options. So I have Debian, I have the GNOME OS nightly builds, uh, OpenSUSE, Manjaro, really a whole bunch of things in here, FreeBSD, Ubuntu, CentOS, more Debian stuff, NetBSD, just a whole lot of options. What you're probably gonna wanna do is just use an ISO image, so we're gonna go ahead to the operating system image file. Uh, I have this over in my backup under disk images. You can see all the different disk images I have. Let's go ahead and open up, uh, let's say Zorn Pro. Let's hit open. And it says here that it was not able to identify it. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and select Ubuntu because this is a Ubuntu based distribution. So let's go Ubuntu LTS, hit next. And here we can see the resource allocation. Now this is one of the cons. The purpose of GNOME boxes is to be a very simple, very easy to use platform with the primary use cases being something like development testing, uh, distribution testing, things like that. So they're not really expecting you to use this to run like full-fledged Adobe suite applications or things like I was just showing you ArcGIS Pro. Granted, you can customize it more than what you see within the application if you use something like Vert Manager, but we're gonna look at that in a different video. The options they do give you in GNOME boxes include the memory, so we can pump this up to like eight gigabytes, for example, and the disk space. And that is all you can customize in here. I wish that there was an option to select custom like CPU cores and maybe some 3D acceleration, but that's not really the purpose of this. It's really to load applications to make sure it works well on different platforms, things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and click create. It's gonna to want to allow certain shortcuts. I'm gonna go ahead and allow it. And you can see Zorn OS already booting up here. I'm gonna go ahead and install or try. If I click on it, I am now in this virtual machine. Uh, let's go ahead, try Zorn OS, just boot into a live environment. And we're in, and you can see if I resize this, it's automatically detecting everything. One, it's partially the fault of Zorn, that's a very good distribution. And two, the software just works really well with operating systems. If I go in, open up something like the uh, task manager or the uh, system monitor, we can see here under resources, we do have access to the entire CPU, which is very nice. Uh, and we have 1.3 gigabytes of memory being used out of the eight gigs that we went ahead and gave the system. So that's just one example. And another cool thing is if I just go ahead and go back right here, that is still technically running. If I go ahead, go into my actual system and look at the system monitor through here, go under resources, you can see right here, the memory is running at 10 gigabytes because I'm giving eight of it to this virtual machine. So you could have multiples open without having it clutter your desktop or anything like that. And to jump back in, just click on it and you can see I am back into Zorn OS Pro. Additionally, if we look up here, I can full screen it if I would like to. So if I just click on that, it's gonna automatically do everything for me. Incredibly simple, it performs very well. If I go ahead and open up like Firefox for the first time, for example, within this live disk, it's open. And that, for if you've ever opened Firefox on a live disk, that's a, a fairly decent speed. And now just to get out of this full screen mode, if you hold your mouse at the top, that's where you get access to your, your UI. So I can hit that button, and now we are back into our normal screen mode, and it's gonna automatically pull that for us. Here we have some keyboard shortcuts that we could set up 
And then right here, we have the option to send a file to the virtual machine, take a screenshot. And if I do that, for example, it's just going to grab that. And I'm honestly not sure where that saves. Uh, I'm going to assume my pictures. And it does, so it, all the screenshots will automatically go over to your pictures. Additionally, we have for shutdown, restart, and properties right here will just give us some of that information. You can see our actual uh, performance and all that here for shutdown, restart. You can edit the XML file here, so this is very specific customizations that aren't within the actual GUI. So you can see right here, uh, vCPU placement static 16. I'm pretty sure that's how you modify the core count. And then down here we have emulator controls. You have the option to change the source files here. Just a lot of different things to go ahead and change and configure through this. And this is a lot of stuff that you could actually open up with uh, Vert Manager and configure through an actual graphical user interface. Or you could just go ahead and use this. So let's go ahead and close that out. If I hit this again, let's do a force shutdown on our system. And that's really about it. If I go over here, I could change the view to more of a list view or the actual tiles. I can search if I had a whole bunch of virtual machines in there. Overall, this is a wonderful piece of software and it's just magnificent that it's shipping with GNOME at this moment. I have really grown attached to GNOME and a lot of the GNOME tools. It just, just these two things alone are awesome. So with all of that said, I would love to give a big thank you to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have Mitchell Valentino, Phil Mac, Kyle, and Timo, Anthony. Thank you all so much for your generous support, and thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. If you are interested in supporting the channel, you can hit the join button down below or go over to the Patreon link in the description. I have a lot of cool projects coming up, so do make sure you are subscribed, ring that bell, like this video, and I look forward to having you all watch all those upcoming projects and videos and things. With all that said, have a beautiful day and goodbye.